All right, guys, got me some Diet Coke here. Um, somebody sent me an email and they were looking through some of the tutorials and they wanted a little bit better explanation of uh, so computer theory, I guess, or maybe how uh, code is set up. And so today, what I've got is I got a blank text document and you can do this in your Windows too. You just open a Word document and you, I've got the terminal open and you can also open this inside your Windows um, command prop. Okay, so once you're in the command prompt, and I tr I change this in the background, so if it looks a little bit different to you, you're like, oh, it's white background, black text. It's okay. I change this too. It's called homebrew setting, and it gives you this not related to beer, even though I wish I had one right now. Um, right now, what you're going to go ahead and do is we're going to work with the language Python, and if you're like, oh my god, we're going through so many different languages, I can't keep them straight. Python is very simple, um, So, but it's very strong language, meaning that it checks its types, and we're going to talk about what types are in a couple minutes. So just type in Python in your prompt, and it's going to come up with the information for Python. Now, those three greater than arrows are your prompt area, where you're going to be typing in things, okay? So what I want to talk to you first about, and I sort of took for granted that if you were watching the other tutorials, you knew what these were, but I want to talk to you about integers and characters, okay? Whenever you're using an integer, you need to make sure, okay, let's go back first. What is an integer? An integer is any number, okay? An integer is a number. What is a character? A character is, take for example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those are all characters, okay? Anything that's not a number. Now, under characters, you have what they call strings. And strings, this is just a fancy way for you to declare what type it is, and I'll show you why that is in a minute. So if you have strings, what that means is that your values, and we're gonna use in Python here just because it doesn't use the quotation mark, it uses the single one. I'm not really sure what that's called, but the single one, you're gonna go A, B, C, okay? We're gonna go A, we're gonna do another one, A, B, you could have um, A, D, you could have uh, G, T, Whatever that is, those are strings. You can have G, J, K, Y, U, I, R, blah, 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 blah. okay? And then that is what you call a string. In other words, you're just declaring to the computer what type of variable it's using because both, all of these are variables, okay? When your computer language, when your computer is looking at all of this language, whatever language you're using, Python, if you're using Objective-C, if you're using C++, if you're using C, if you're using uh, C-sharp, F-sharp, whatever you're using. Uh, so you, what happens is your computer has its own language. It has a binary language. And a binary language means, binary means, bi means two. So they, it, it's composed of ones and zeros. That's how your computer works. Okay, so let's say you have some certain value here, x. And then x, instead of, let's say x equals 5 times something else times something else times something else. In reality, what your computer does is x equals 5. I don't have the actual binary translation here, but at, we're going to turn it into binary and just make something up. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, okay, is what 5 is going to be equal to in computer language. Well, that's why your computer has an interpreter. You write your source code here, and you declare the types of integers and the types of characters you're using are strings, and then your computer interprets that into binary language that your computer understands, and then it gives you an output. Okay, now what we want to talk about right now is since we just talked about integers and characters or strings, uh, we want to talk about types, and that is what they are. You have a variable, variable, of a certain type, okay? So let's say you have variable x, and it is of type integer. In most computer programs, you're gonna see these integers declared, and declaring is basically telling your computer what it is, int x, okay? int equals integer. Character is C-A-R, C-A-R, C-H-A-R, and then you're gonna go ahead and put whatever that is, D. And then if you have a string, it's gonna be like this, but we'll talk about how characters and strings are sort of combined in this, okay? So you could just call that string D, okay? So you have a different type. You have types integers and you have type characters and type strings, right? So for this, what we wanna talk about is you also have a value. Take for example, you have a character X equals 
and then it's going to be equal to 5. And what happens is your computer, the code, binds x to 5, meaning that x now is equal to 5. Now, the, what these are called is every expression, okay, or an expression, if you remember back to math, is, is uh, what it is that uh, you're trying to do. You're writing it out mathematically, right? You're writing a formula out. So what you have here is in an expression, you have what they call operands and uh, operators, and you're probably like, man, you're getting way too sophisticated for me. No, actually, we just used it. X is an operand, okay? X is operand, and I'm not going to put the equal sign in because the equal sign is an operator, okay? And the other operand that we have is 5, okay? So you have operand, you have operator, oops, I can't spell, operator, and then you have an operand, okay? Those are most of the when you're doing all your declarations, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be using a lot of operand, operator, operands. These are your params, okay, that you're going to be using. Now, your interpreter right here, and this is what you need to know, your interpreter right here does an eval, and it also prints what your information is. Sometimes it does an eval, and you don't see the information. Why? Because you're going to be using it later on in your program. Now, what you want to do I'm going to tell you that the evaluator does not always print. Let's just put that out because I just said because sometimes you use the value in another part of your program, okay, and you don't need it immediately. So now what I want to talk about, and let's just say this, your script, there is no print. Oops print unless you explicitly tell it to print, okay? Print is a command that Python uses, and it doesn't print unless you explicitly tell it to print. Now, let's go over to Python real quick, and I want to show you how these variables work. And now, this is something that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to go through these, and, and what's very important that you do is you need to see how your computer does it. So what is it doing um, and how does it do it? So what I want to do is let's evaluate a couple expressions three times and then you're going to do the, not the quotation, but the one that's on the same button, okay? A, B, and then we're going to see what that gets. And that's going to get A, B, A, B, A, B, okay? Now I want to evaluate another expression and we're just going to put A in there plus, and then I'm going to put B, C, D, and then we're going to click enter, and that equals A, B, C, D. If you see that, it just puts it there. This one concatenates three times the, you know, that little quote thing, A, B, close quote thing, A, B, A, B, A, B. That's all it does is put it three times in a row, concatenates. Okay, now what we have is I want to do three plus A, B. What do you think is going to happen here? Because if you look at this one, we have a string and a string, which is easy to combine. This is just saying three times this string. So put it three times. This is saying I want to take an integer and add a string to it. Now what's going to happen? You're going to have an error. And this is going to be of type semantic. It's called a semantic um, error. And it's a static semantic error, and we can talk about that later, but a semantic error means that you have, let me type this over here, semantic error, oops, semantic error means that you have the syntax, and the syntax in this case is operand, operator, operand, correct. But, in this case, but your semantics or the meaning of it, meaning, does it make sense to the computer? Why? Well, the reason why is because your computer 
does type checking. And remember when I told you about types and we did type integer, type character, type string? That's what happens here. And that's why it gives you a type error because it says unsupported operand types for addition plus integer and string. So in other words, you're not, you can't add the integer and string together because they're not of the same type. And what your computer does is it does a type check. That's what that is called. Uh, let's type this out here. It's called a type check. Uh, and then what is important to know that some programming languages have what they call weak versus strong type checking. Okay. This is very important, uh, and the reason I say that is because if you're writing a program, uh, you need to know that your computer is checking this and your interpreter is checking this correctly and making sure that your computer program or your script is consistent. Now what happens is there's weak versus strong type checking. Python happens to be a fairly uh, strong type uh, checker. There's other weaker ones that don't look so much as that, which can cause you a lot of problems down the road, so you need to see what it is that you want to do. Now I want to give you another example, and what we're going to do here is I want to type string, and then we're going to do three, and then we're going to add um, a, b, okay? Now we're going to hit enter, and it goes three, a, b. This is an example right here. The three, a, b is an example of a type conversion. That's what this means. In other words, remember we said that you can't do the other one because the semantic error. We talked about, about the semantic error. Well, it ceases to be a semantic error, error if you convert them to the same type. Okay. In this case, you have to take the integer. The integer, in this case, equals the string, okay? Because you set this up as string value. str is the symbol. String, in between parentheses, plus, and then that open quote looking thing, ab, and then the close one equals 3ab. And the reason why this worked is because you did a type conversion. You give it the type of operand, operand, remember that's x, 5, whatever those values are, your operator is your symbol, right? Your um, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Uh, give it the type of operand, and it takes it and converts it into a string, okay? That's what we did there. Now, the params part right here is the input. And we can talk about that later because we're probably going to talk about pointers and we're going to talk about a uh, thing in other tutorials if I get a chance to talk to you about that. Now this is the three is the parameter, the three. So string three plus a, b. Now what I want to go ahead and talk to you about is type checking real quick. And I've only got a couple seconds. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make another tutorial I think about this. Type checking. And we're going to put this expression here but I'm going to do it over in Python in just a second. A is less than 3. Okay? I'm going to put this right here. Type check is less than 3. That's going to come back as false. So how are you going to compare a string to a number? It actually returned false. Well, the thing is, is that your computer actually, so let me type this in here. How are you going to compare a string to a number, it actually returns false. Now you can actually compare, and this is called lexicographical concepts, you can actually compare lexicographical concepts, concepts. So I want to give you another example here. And I gotta do this real quick. Actually, I'm gonna have to do it in the next tutorial. Jump online if you wanna see the next one. I'll start this out as Python variable.